Hey everybody, let's talk about async await promise error handling or rejection handling. This is something I spent a lot of time thinking about and uh, coding different examples because there's four, five, a couple different ways to actually handle errors in this type of stuff. And I was I sent this tweet out yesterday because I was really thinking about this like error handling pattern where um, back in the Node.js days, we used to get the error and the data all at, at a single level. Um, and then we have try catch and catch and, and then and whatever. And there's all these scoping issues. So I'm going to take you down the four different methods for error handling in JavaScript. Um, and then we'll go into this last one here, which is is pretty nifty, I think. So uh, first, some ground rules here. This async function get cheese, a very simple function that is meant to replicate what an asynchronous function does. It's going off to the network, fetching data, or it's it's waiting for some amount of of time or waiting for something to happen before it actually comes back to you with either your resolved data or a rejection. So here after one millisecond, I put it to one millisecond so it, it, these examples will run quickly. Um, it will do one of the two and I'm passing a Boolean here of whether or not it should reject. Um, then I, I give you some example. You're like, okay, well, like, why would you want to do this type of thing? And it's pretty common in, in server-side code and in client-side code as well, where um, you need to like query a database or hit an API or do something that is asynchronous. Um, and then when that thing is done, you got to check if something, some error happened. Um, and if there is an error, then you go ahead and return some sort of error. And then if there's not, you return a response. And this is a pretty simple example. But as soon as you get into several database calls, maybe you need to read some, whoa, need to, uh, a little bit too emphatic here. Maybe you need to uh, read a couple files from the file system or, or whatever. They start to get kind of tricky with scope. So let's go through those right now. The first method we have here is with the then and catch methods on a promise. So when you get the cheese and it comes back, you have a then and you have access to those cheeses. Otherwise, if it rejects, you can put it in a catch. Um, the Not necessarily the problem. I don't want to say any of these are problem because these are all valid use cases for catching rejected promises. But the in the use case I showed earlier, sometimes it can be a little bit annoying. So if this was the case up here, like if I were to put that in here, um, then I need to put my success up here and my error would have to go inside of here. Uh, and that's not necessarily the end of the use case. I think I could, I, if this, now this here needs to be returned because in order to get to this return, we have to return that. Um, and that's not, not, not awful, but as soon as it starts to get any more complicated than that, then you're starting to think like, okay, well, I need some of the code inside the catch that is also inside of the then. How do I share it? And it, it just becomes a bit of spaghetti at that point and um, not ideal. So to sort of combat that, um, we have the next method, which is uh, a sync await. Uh, so instead of using then and catch, you can simply just wait for it and stick it into a variable. The await keyword will wait until this promise is resolved and stick the actual result of that in a variable, and then I have straight ahead access to it. Then we go ahead and catch the error here. Still the same problem with the scoping though. Like what happens if I, like if I need to do some code here, and then after I have the cheese, I want to run some code here. Uh, then you have to like, a lot of people will say like, let outer cheese, and then you'll update it. You'll say outer cheese is equal to cheese. Uh, you update a variable outside of that and, or the error. It's kind of annoying to have to do that. So again, you have a problem with the try catches. You have scoped values in here. You probably could get away with using a var there because vars are not block scoped like const and let values are. Um, but then you have just ugly try catches everywhere. So again, nothing wrong with the try catch, but it's not ideal in, in some use cases, right? Um, third one, and I, I should also say here, all these examples here are not um, catching um, thrown exceptions. Um, so actually this one would catch a thrown exception. All of this code can be modified to do a thrown exception. This is just for rejected promises. That's what I'm focusing on here. Uh, certainly we can cover those if you need to catch those. Uh, third one, this is kind of what I've been using for, for most of my career in a sync await is I call it the mix and match method, which is 
basically uh, await the get cheese. And if that works, then my cheese is going to be a variable. And if it doesn't work, the catch is going to run. Uh, and then I can go like my the happy path here and console.log my cheese, um, and that will work. However, if there is an actual error, then I could like maybe instead of console logging, I, I could like uh, show message to the user and show them that the specific error and tell them. But the problem is, is then, but the code underneath here still runs. So I kind of need like a if an error happened here, but then the error again is, is stuck inside of this dot catch and I'd have to make a variable outside of it, right? So um, in, in a lot of cases, that's fine. And even in my node course, we simply just catch it and pass it to next. And what that does is it passes the error down the line. So if you have other infrastructure in place, um, then this, this solution works super well. And I'm actually a big fan of it and I still use it in a lot of it. Um, so the next one that I have here, and this is kind of, I've been seeing this in a lot of libraries. I'm like, I should like make a little function that I could just use that myself because, um, ideally what I want to do is be able to have access to both the data and the error on the line right underneath running it. So I want it to look a little bit something like this. So const, uh, data error is equal to. Um, or we'll call it cheese data and cheese error. How did I make a cheese error already? Cheese error two. <laughs> we'll go over that issue in just a second. So essentially, I want this. I want to have my data and my error, and I want to be able to say, if there is an error, then deal with the error. Deal with it. Otherwise, just like keep going and inside of here you just like return uh from your actual function you send a response back from the server and i really like that that's how i initially learned when node.js before promises were a thing we had callbacks and they would give you two things they would first give you the error and then they would give you the data um and you could you check for an error first if it is you handle it appropriately if not you keep going with your actual data. So I was a big fan of that. So the solution to that is you, I wrote this little function here, uh, a sync wrap. It takes in a promise. So get, remember get cheese returns a promise. It doesn't return cheeses. It returns a promise of cheeses. Uh, you see it says then cheddar, brie and gouda. Like it's, 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 it doesn't return it yet. It says, I will, I promise to give you some cheese. So you pass in a promise and then you try to await that promise. And if you get the data back, you return data. And in, in in this case, I put null. Someone got mad at me on Twitter for passing null. Let me put it, put them back in here. Null or like I would probably use undefined here, right? And what you do here is you return an array of data being successful and, and the error being undefined. And if there is a caught error, you do the opposite. You return undefined as the data and the error that was caught as the actual error. And then what that allows us to do is we can run this async wrap function here and then stick the data and the error into their own variables. And because we're returning it as an array, you can name these things whatever you possibly want. In our case, I named it cheese data two or cheese error two. That's the same thing in React with set state and all the hooks. Uh, it's you just name them. That's often called in in TypeScript land and in, in many other. People are always telling me this is what Go does. Um, I, I I've never written a line of Go in my life, uh, but a lot of people are like this is how Go handles errors, um, and. This is called a tuple in TypeScript and in a lot of programming languages. A tuple is an array of a set length where the items in are well-defined types, meaning that successful data error error type in there. Um, then uh, let's let's take a look at some of these smart. This is why I freaking love Twitter. Like, look at this. Uh, how many replies? A bazillion. Look at this. It just it goes on forever. Um, these people all much smarter, most of them much smarter than me. <laughs> uh, so this guy, Noam says, have you tried all settled? And I thought, 
yeah, I literally tweeted a tip two weeks ago on All Settle, but I never thought to use it for this use case. Like, that's freaking genius. What does All Settled do? Well, uh, All Settled will wait for all of your promises to be done regardless of if they reject or resolve. And that's very important because uh, normally promise.all, that will wait for all of your promises to successfully finish. But if one of them rejects, then the whole thing is over. The whole thing is aborted. So we use all settled and that will simply give you uh, in here, look at this results. It'll tell you if it's fulfilled and give you a value of the of the data, or it will give you a status of rejected and a reason why that thing was rejected. So that's great because promise.all settled has no catch. It simply waits for both of them and returns both pieces of data to you. So that that kind of does what I was doing here in something that's just already built into the browser. Um, the downside is that it's an array and the status and value. So again, smart folks on Twitter, look at this. Uh, Santang says, uh, look at this little ditty that I wrote here, not a sync wrap. So he's like, it, it doesn't need to be in a sync function. Uh, it takes in and he did it all in arrow functions. And I rewrote it with just regular functions because um, I understand this, but it can be a little bit hard to look at when it's all arrow functions with implicit returns. So I rewrote it um, and said it, it just called it wrap it. It takes in a promise like before. Um, then we use promise to all settled and we just pass it one promise. We, we only care about one promise here, but we're sort of using the fact that all settled will return whether it rejects or resolves here. So we say promise to all settled. We pass it our promise. We have to pass it an array because it takes an array of promises, even if it's just one. Um, then when they are successful, remember what we said, remember what we said, a promise that all settled will return. It returns fulfilled or rejected. And if it's fulfilled, it returns a value. And if it's rejected, it returns a reason. So that's really cool. So value, if it's good, reason, if it's bad. So you can kind of, say, well, the simple existence of a value means it was good. The existence of a reason means it was bad. So what we do here is we return both. We return the value that is being destructured from that result there. We don't care about the status here. but The status is not being used at all here. We simply just care about the value or the reason. And in every single use case here, you're either going to have a value with the resolved data or you're going to have a reason with the rejected error. You will never have both, which is exactly what we were doing right here. You either have data and no error or you have no data and an error. And that will return data and no error or the opposite, which is no data and an error. So let's see how that works. I, I like that because it's not a sync. You don't have to await it or anything like that. Um, and then we just go ahead and use it like this. You await Oh, no, I don't even. Yeah, you do need to still await it because it returns a promise. So you pass, wrap it, and look at right here. So the first one uh, returns cheddar, brie, gouda, and undefined. So that means it returns your data as the first item and undefined as the error. Go to my document. A, a spare extension well, cord? Well, well, you probably have spare. I probably do. Yeah. Sorry, we needed an extension cord. Um, what were we saying here? Okay, so this one is the same thing. We don't need that. Um, then here is the the other example, which is when it errors or when you have a, a rejected promise. And in this case, we get undefined and she sucks. So that's really, really nice. Um, and because, again, because it's in an array, you can just name them whatever you want. Now, the Rust people. Uh, so that's how Go does it. Um, and then the Rust people and, and a lot of the TypeScript people as well and said, 
we I prefer a result type. So instead of returning an array where you have to remember data first, error second, because quite honestly, a lot of people do the opposite, error first, data second. And how are you going to remember that? Well, your, your editor will tell you. But if you want, you can return an object here uh, where the data is equal to the value and the error is equal to the reason. Um, and then in order to use it, you could just stick it in a result variable. Uh, and that result will have a data property and an error property. So you could just say like, uh, if result dot error, then go ahead and handle it. Otherwise, don't um, and, and keep going on with your life. A lot of people will like to destructure it. Uh, so you do something like this, but you have to destructure it. You have to destructure it into the property names, data and error, right? Because it's an object. You can't just name it whatever you want. Um, and that becomes a bit of an issue when you have multiples uh, because they're all named the same thing. So what you have to do is something like this, where you destructure it and then rename the variable right away with destructure renaming here, um, which it's not the end of the world. Um, I'm not sure what I, which one I prefer, array or that. I prefer this because I, I know what the properties are called and I don't have to worry about the order of them. And I prefer this because it's nice just to make a variable to be whatever I want. Uh, further reading. Lots of people said, this is this is a thing already, Wes. Like, you did not invent this, which I know. Uh, so very popular um, library. These are all TypeScript supported as well, which is fantastic. Uh, Await2JS does exactly this. Uh, doublet does exactly this. And go, go, try does exactly this. I believe the doublet one, I was just looking at the source. By the way, like if you want to like learn some like a little bit more advanced TypeScript, I'm coming out with a course, but um, this is a great TypeScript to read because it's like, this is pretty complicated, but also like you could grab a coffee and maybe understand it. Uh, so uh, this one takes in the function and the arguments and then calls it for you. And the benefit of that, instead of us calling it inside of this, is that if there were to be a thrown error, so not a rejection error, but a thrown error, you throw an error yourself or syntax error or anything like that, then you the try catch will actually catch. Um, the try catch actually catches that error as well. So it catches rejection promises and thrown errors, which uh, from the smart people on the internet, about half of them don't want um, thrown errors to be caught and half of them do want thrown errors to be caught. So pretty cool stuff. Um, I, there's so much here that I thought I would just make a video summarizing all of it. Uh, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are on approaching rejection handling in all of these methods and promises and async await. Peace.